So I want to give my thoughts on Wayfair. There's been a lot of recent controversy and accusations around this company. But first, if you're not familiar with who they are, Wayfair is a company that believes everyone should live in a home they love through technology and innovation. They make it possible for shoppers to quickly and easily find exactly what they want from a selection of more than 18 million items across home furnishing, decor, home improvement, and more. They are reinventing the way people shop for their homes from product discovery to final delivery. The price action on this stock is very interesting. The stock has seen a ginormous rally since their March lows. It has rallied an almost 800% gain since then. That's insane. The stock reached a 52-week low of 2170. The poor company was almost absolutely abolished during the start of the pandemic. But during this time, investors grew bullish on the idea that consumers being stuck at home meant that they would spend more money on home furnishing and decorations. Because of this, the stock rose 550% from mid-March to early May, and another 40% after they reported their first quarter numbers that basically confirmed the idea that this company is a COVID survivor and a winner. The company currently sells almost 10 million products annually. According to Forbes, the company's net revenue generated in 2017 was $4.7 billion, a 40% increase from the year before that. But with so much good news, the company just recently found themselves in a... this type of predicament. YouTube doesn't like when you talk around these type of topics, so I'm going to refrain from saying these sensitive keywords. But the company is accused of being involved in a... This whole thing was started when a user on Reddit posted on July 9th screenshots showing that something was off about the website's listings. This bizarre idea centered around all this was that Wayfair's listings contained furniture such as cabinets and other household items having ridiculous price targets ranging from ten dollars to $15,000. And the weird part is that these listings also had names that people think were of missing and that if you entered the SKU numbers of the products they could be used to find images of on a Russian website, and some tried to link this to the Epstein scandal. I mean, it's not hard to believe that someone would want to link this to the recent arrest of Maxwell. I mean, what if Maxwell did start talking, and that's what led to this uncovering? Well, honestly, I don't believe this to be true. But then again, the company has had previous negative news. Back in 2019, when 500 employees walked out of the company's Boston headquarters after the company had profited of selling beds to detention centers holding migrant children. Wayfair supplied furniture to a federal detention center at the U.S.-Mexican border in a $200,000 contract. I mean, I can kind of have sympathy or understand why they would protest. I mean, this is a humanitarian right, an ethical one when it comes to separation of families. Back then in 2019, there was this whole thing of children being separated. So that's why this whole Wayfair thing, people are trying to connect that maybe some of those missing children were due with the whole Wayfair scandal. But I'm going to stop digging because... If I keep digging into this, I might open up a new can of worms that I do not want. And next thing you know, the FBI is going to be knocking on my door. So let's keep going. Moving on. The company Wayfair responded to these accusations in a statement that said, There is, of course, no truth to these claims. The products in question are industrial grade cabinets that are accurately priced. Recognizing that the photos and descriptions provided by the supplier did not adequately explain that high price point, they have then removed the listings. They removed the listings because they said that the description did not match the price point, instead of just admitting that the price point was wrong to begin with. This whole statement contains first-hand confirmation that Wayfair utilizes pricing robots or dynamic pricing. Pricing on Wayfair sites change in real time thanks to an automated algorithm. Them. In a 2015 Harvard Business School case study, Wayfair's vice president of pricing at the time told authors that prices are adjusted daily. On any given day, our model evaluates factors such as seasonal effects and competition and adjusts price automatically. The algorithm also takes into consideration availability and shipping times. And this is all common across many e-commerce platforms. Wayfair definitely lied in their statement saying that all their listings that contained ridiculously high prices were all accurately priced. Because if you don't know, even good quality industrial cabinets don't even come close to selling at those ridiculously prices. They don't sell for over 10 grand or even 15 grand like the listings that are on Wayfair's website. I think that Wayfair lying in their statement only added more to the fire. I mean, it's a lot better than admitting to if it is true. Even if this is not true, this incident exposed a bizarre and widespread flaw in their pricing setup, which is not a good look for Wayfair. 
so instead they denied it. They refused to come out and say that their pricing is flawed. They also did not mention anything about the names that are in the listings. What might explain why some of the listings contain names is because we might be looking at an algorithm that takes random names and images for the products. Trained on news articles to learn names. That's why they can be connected to names that have been reported missing. No way this company wants to admit that their pricing robot is responsible for overcharging customers almost 10 or 20 times what the item normally sells for. Wayfair is supposed to be a trusted retailer and higher quality than Amazon is part of their brand image. Now it looks like they use shady AIs that are not afraid to be wrong. But I digress. Should you short this stock? While the company has reported strong revenue growth over the past years, this has not translated into profitability. In 2015, the revenue was $2.2 billion, which more than quadrupled to $9.1 billion in 2019. In just the last three years, customers who purchased an item within a year nearly doubled from approximately $11 million to over $20 million. However, over the last five years, its loss widened from about $77 million to $985 million. So while the company did a nice job at attracting customers and growing, their costs increased much, much faster. The reason their losses are so high are because of their selling expenses, operations, and technology costs to improve the customer experience and spending on advertising to grow as fast as possible. Wayfair also has a lot of competition. They have been spending crazy money to draw new customers and build up the business, but we have to remember they are going up against big companies such as Amazon, which technically has no competition. In the first quarter earnings call, the CFO said, we will likely deal with the recessionary environment and there will continue to be global and domestic turmoil. But we believe we are now well positioned to thrive regardless. So they seem very confident that they will come out of this very strong. And with earnings coming in August 5th, we can assume that they will also post strong numbers again. While some may turn to Wayfair's online platform for the first time, high unemployment could certainly cause people to hold off on spending on furniture, let alone buying $10,000 cabinets. I feel like the company's revenue growth will likely feel the effects this time around, especially with all these allegations coming out right now. But still, the management team deserves credit for building an online home's good business. It has gained a loyal following and proven it can grow revenue. However, it still has not generated profit. And all of this bad press circling around this conspiracy will make that a bigger challenge now. Whether this whole thing is true or not, you can't help but think of the possibility that there is something shady going around with this whole thing. Who knows, maybe someone has this huge short position and just made up this whole scandal to try to get the price to finally come down. I think if you're thinking about shorting this stock, you should do it for the short term. I think the price will definitely drop down in the short term, especially opening on Monday, July 12th. You always have to question everything. I mean, does it really make sense that the price stock jumps so high in such a short amount of time? If there's anything that I know is that when a stock keeps going up and up and up in such a short amount of time, usually it tends to drop hard. It loses steam. You know, people want to take their profits. So if you're thinking about shorting, I don't think that's such a bad idea for the short term. Anyways, that's all I have. Hopefully the FBI doesn't come knocking on my door. <laughs> also, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you guys think all of this is true? What do you guys think? Is there a possibility that they're running this type of ring or could this be like a hedge funds stunt to try to get the price to go down and they can take a lot of profit? But anyways, thank you for listening.